Okay, so now it says, uh, a peaceful vigil took place in the area of Nanterre on the outskirts of Paris, right, Paris, where the shooting occurred before protests became violent with cars, torch, and clashes with police. Unrest spread to other areas, including the uh, LSA in central Paris, and over the following days, it expanded to cities such as Marseille, Lyon, Pau, uh, Toulouse, and Lille. More than 3,000 people were arrested. Uh, the recent unrest was the most severe the country has seen since the deaths of two teenagers in 2005 who had also had contact with the police. It follows the Yellow Vest protests that were sparked by a rise in fuel tax in 2018. Right now, you remember the, you know, the Yellow Vest protests and they were t protesting over tax. Right. And that was a heavy time for protests uh, in France. And all this occurred right before the uh, crisis in uh, 2019 and 2020 with the uh, the C-19, okay? And that kind of overshadowed other news, but there were heavy protests in France. You had the, the, you know, the protests in Hong Kong, okay? And these things have been building up for years, man, but now we're seeing, um, well, as it says, you know, civil unrest is, is uh, glowing, I'm sorry, growing, and then things uh, occur, kind of dies down, but then it gets hot again. These are the things that Yahweh Shah was talking about when he says that the nations were going to be perplexed, which basically means distressed, confused. You know, people are going to be uh, 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 um, at odds with the government. Okay. All right. This is what it's talking about. Um, it says. It says it follows the yellow vest protests that were sparked by a rise in fuel tax in 2018 and resulted in $1.2 billion in losses to French retailers and recent protests and clashes with police after President Emmanuel Macron pressed ahead with plans to increase their retirement age from 62 to 64. So this is why these people in France are, are going... Um, going to the streets the police the brutality over there higher uh, um, taxes fuel taxes and the policies dealing with the retirement age and that's on top of other countries having civil unrest as well okay so now let me go back here luke 21 and 25 now all of this is 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 before the return of the messiah all right this is a sign that that our savior yahweh shah is about to return it says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth's distress of nations with perplexity. And that's what I've just been going over. Uh, okay, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts filling them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. So people are starting to be scared because they don't know what's going to happen. You know, something happens one day and then within the next week, you got all hell breaking loose. OK, it says, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. All right. So now I want to address back in verse 25, the signs and the sun, the moon and in the stars. Now, this was sent. Uh, to brothers earlier. All right. Brothers that mentioned this here. This is from the end of the American dream. Uh, which says, do you know about the three eclipses that will combine to create a giant? It says a left over America, which that's a Hebrew word, a lop. OK. Um, and you can see the, the paleo ancient paleo Hebrew character here. OK. Um, so it says, I am about to share something with you that is truly remarkable. The paths of three eclipses, okay, will combine to form a giant lop over America, and hardly anyone knows about this. Now, I did a video. I did a video a few weeks back dealing with the uh, the um, eclipses that were that are going to occur in the near future. Uh, 
later this year, there's going to be a total solar eclipse to occur uh, around September, October in the fall. And then you're going to have about six months later, you're going to have a total solar eclipse uh, occur. Matter of fact, it's in the image here. And you can see how it makes an X. Now, the Paleo-Hebrew character that coincides with the letter X or what we know in the uh, uh, alphabet that we grew up with here in America, the so-called alphabet, right, English alphabet, uh, it's an X, but it's actually a tha. okay, a tha. all right? <clears throat> now, X means a lot of different things. X can mean unknown, but X also is is a symbol of you know a mark you know like those saying x marks the spot well this x is marking the spot where the destruction is going to take place which is america which is babylon the great according to bible prophecy and the scriptures the x is marking that this is this place is going to be destroyed this is the target for the nuclear destruction and the target for the angels and the target also for Yahweh Shai coming to deliver and save his elect out of Babylon the Great. But now the the X, which is a Tha character, all right, that is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the ancient Paleo-Hebrew alphabet, the Tha, which looks like an X, okay? It's actually where you get the X from. A matter of fact, the, the word alphabet is uh is uh is actually Hebrew, but the word alpha goes back to the Greek, which actually goes back to the Hebrew. Okay, you have a left and then you have alpha. So it would it really should be a left bet, uh which bet is also Hebrew, the Hebrew word bayath, which means house, okay. Uh what the Hebrew is, is us being Hebrew Israelites, we should be getting to the Hebrew anyway. Uh, so you know. But now this this here is saying that now it says three eclipses will occur. The three is recording it is. Uh you you know, we did have a major solar eclipse in twenty seventeen. I remember because I was actually working outside that day and we had to leave up from work early. I think uh not it was either before noon or after noon or right before noon or lunchtime. We had to pack up and just head on home because uh, the eclipse occurred and everything turned dark. And you can see it in certain places. Um, matter of fact, where I was at, where I was working at, I was in the path, okay, of the eclipse where I could see it, which I just, you know, I just, you know, went home and, you know, turned it on to the TV and, uh, you know, saw it from there. But you can, you know, see outside that, you know, things actually got dark. So that was, you know, like it says here, August 21st, 2017. But now in the new eclipses that's going to occur, okay, in the new eclipses, <clears throat> you have... Uh, they're making a X or a Tha, which when you combine the, the solar eclipse from 2017 and the two upcoming eclipses this year and then next year in 2024, it does make an a lot. All right. Uh, OK, here we go. So let me read some of this here. It says now, of course, that a left or a lot is the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet. The second letter in the Hebrew alphabet is Bayath. It says Bet, but it's actually pronounced Bayath. Most people don't realize this, but our word alphabet, which I, I just mentioned this, originally came from a combination of Aleph and Bet, which Alpha is, is Greek, okay? But like I said, it goes back to the Hebrew. It says, but it is the fact that a giant Alot will soon be completed over the United States. Significant. But is the fact, right? Is it significant? I believe that it is, and I will explain why in this article. 
Oh, and I just read this. See, I haven't gone to this article yet, but this is 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 crazy. Well, it's not crazy. It's the spirit, all right? The Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shai, which is guiding me to this article. It says in the 21st chapter of Luke, which I just read, Yahweh Shai warned us that there would be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars in the last days. Okay? I just read that scripture. All right? Luke 21 and 25, before the return of the anointed one, the Messiah, okay, who the word enemy calls Christ. It says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, which that's what I'm going over now. But I, And it says, and, I, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. And I, I just went over that. I just went over how these nations are dealing with distress and perplexity. Which perplexity means to be in a state of confusion, okay? And these nations are. So now let's go back and deal with this um, This here, okay? Uh, let's see here. It says, so we should be watching for such things. Yes, we should. This is why the Lord set the prophets up so we can watch and warn the elect, the hopeful elect about what's coming and condemn the wicked and say, this is what the Lord is doing. See, this is all, everything is all in control by Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai, okay? Everything is in control by the Holy Spirit and Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shai, uh, which he gives his inspiration to the prophets to speak these words okay but now you have other people that are into the scriptures that see these things too okay so now it says in order for an eclipse to happen both the sun and the moon must be involved previously I have explained how the great American eclipse of 2017 will later combine with the great American eclipse of 2024 to create a giant X across America, which I, I said that X marks the spot. It says, the following is an excerpt from my book entitled Seven Year Apocalypse. Well, it's not going to, and if, you know, these Christians, you know, these people that's deep into the scriptures, they they do have a, a, a certain level of understanding of certain things, but there's not going to be a seven year tribulation and then the end um, it's just everything is predicated off of prophecy. You know, you just watch for the signs, and as time goes on, things occur. Okay? Um, uh, well, what would you say if I told you that an enormous X, or really a thaw? Now, if this person is deep as they're trying to portray themselves to be, as if they got the whole truth, they would also equate this X to the Hebrew character Tha, which is the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, okay? Matter of fact, uh, let's see if I can get the uh, Paleo. Paleo Hebrew alphabet, okay? And let's get the Paleo Hebrew alphabet. So you can see. Oh, well, here you go. Now you can see here. What you see here in this image is you see the characters that we have in our alphabet that coincide with the ancient Hebrew. The A is the Alap, the B is the Ba, the C is the Ga, because there's no C sound. In the Hebrew alphabet, the D is the Da. The E is actually a high character. Okay? So these are the things that, that this is how you know that the ancient Hebrew, the Paleo Hebrew, what we know is, is the Lasha one Kodach, which means holy tongue. That's the original language of the planet Earth when you go into uh, the book of Genesis. All right? 
<clears throat> and you can see here the first letter, right, is the A, ah, and the last letter is the what the X, the Tha, which there are 22 characters in the Hebrew alphabet, okay? Okay, 22 characters, all right? <clears throat> now they have this X here. And this like I said, these these scholars they 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 have a certain understanding, but they're not as deep as the prophets. And this is why we are the prophets, because now uh now they have the T here as the 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 last character. Which looks like an X, but that's that's the X. All right, the T will actually be this character here in the middle. Let's see if I can pull it up. This would be the T without the circle. There should be a cross, a T, in the middle of this uh, circle here. Uh, let me see here. <clears throat> see, they equated. They equated as. A T, some scholars, right? They say T, Ta, right? You see, they have it here, all right? Which this is a, which Proto-Hebrew or Aramaic, which yes, the Aramaic, uh, and also the Arabic languages all go back to the Hebrew. Now, they have T, the T character here in two places, which I said the T, which is the Ta character in the ancient Paleo Hebrew, is a lowercase T with a circle around it. But then you have the Ta here, which that should be an X. But like I said, you know, they're not as deep, as deep as we would go into the Hebrew because we're the Hebrew Israelites. We're, we're the, the, the men of the Lord. You know, Lord willing, we're of the elect, you know, myself, speaking for myself, you know, that this should be you know, we go a little bit deeper, you know. That we give the whole truth of the matter. But these you know, scholars they have a certain level of understanding that they can go into but they don't get a full understanding. Okay? Um, all right, I just want to exit out of this. How do I? Okay. Uh, I'm not even sure why they don't equate it with an X. I mean, it's obviously an X, but then they put the tie. Anyway, I mean, that's neither here nor there. You know, it doesn't. It's not going to make or break the understanding of what I'm bringing out, nor of the Hebrew language. But anyway, um, but you saw it there that, you know, the main point is, all right, the main point is that this character, right, the first character, this is what the eclipses are making, a symbol of the ah, okay, of the Paleo-Hebrew alphabet, which is the beginning and then when you look at the eclipses that's to occur in 2023 and 2024, the Tha is the end. Okay? The Ah and the Tha is the end. Now, who is also known as the beginning and the end? Okay? Matter of fact, let me see here. Let me go back here. Uh... They don't, let me see what they speak. Now, these are the eclipses here that I was speaking about in the future that's to come. You can see they make an X or a Tha, which is the end. It's, gonna, it's, it's spelling out the end of Babylon the Great, which is soon to come. Okay? Uh, I don't think this... Yeah, see, so this article doesn't mention it. It says the Alap is from the Paleo-Hebrew script. Also, Paleo-Hebrew, Proto-Hebrew, or Old Hebrew, the writing system found in ancient inscriptions 
of biblical Israel and Judah. Right. And I'm just going through here. Uh, now it says, I find it hard to believe that this is just a coincidence. Matter of fact, let me read this. It says, and that is the day when the great American eclipse crosses America and completes the allot. What's that's going to happen? They're talking about, yeah, uh, April. Okay, let's, let's say it says, now, if you do a Google search for when the new moon in Jerusalem will be in April 2024, you will discover that it will be on April 8th. Well, we'll see, because if that's the truth, that's heavy. That's heavy. You know, I, I'll come back and I'll, I'll look that up and see if there's a new moon going to occur um, on April 8th. All right. Um, it says now, and that is the day when the great American eclipse crosses America and completes the allot. By the way, April 8th also happens to be the first day of the first month on the Hebrew calendar. Well, that is when the true new year starts. It doesn't start in, De in January, end of December, start in January. The new year actually starts in the springtime. That's why you get new life springs forth during that time of year okay around march or april so that's that's uh true now if i'm not sure of the the people over there the 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 small hats if they're going to celebrate their new year in that day but um you know it has to be seen and that's usually you know around the time uh Passover occurs, all right, in the spring, all right? So now it says, in other words, a brand new biblical year begins on that date. Well, we'll see. It says, I find it hard to believe that this is just a coincidence. Well, it is a new year, though. A new year does occur in the spring, all right? And no, it's not a coincidence. This this eclipse to occur, creating this ah, uh, but also creating... Um, the star here. What is it? What is it speaking? It's speaking on the end of Babylon the Great, okay, aka America, as 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 we know it today. But in prophecy, it's known as Babylon the Great. So it should be called the Great American Eclipse of Babylon. All right. Uh, let's go back down. It says, I think that God is trying to tell us something. He is. Okay? He is trying to tell us something. The Heavenly Father, whose name is not God, but his name is Yahweh, okay, is going to send back his son, whose name is not Jesus, but his name is Yahweh Shai. Okay? He is going to deliver the elect out of America, out of Babylon the Great, and this place is marked for destruction. Okay, the end of this place is coming. It says, of course, he has been trying to warn us in hundreds of different ways, but most people don't want to listen. Yeah, he's doing it through the Hebrew Israelites out there on the street corners, mainly the men of great millstones, starting with the apostles and elders. All right, and we've been on YouTube for nearly 15 years, from July 2007. Matter of fact, it's July 2023. Okay. So over that amount of time, okay, almost 16 years. You know, my 16 years. So now it's, it's time for the Lord to do something, which he's given us a sign that he is going to do something. Because most of you people don't listen. You all oh, them Hebrew Israelites are crazy, or even certain Israelites think that, GMS is crazy, but you don't see these other groups going into topics like this. All these major events occur, and they want to march around the cities. No. Speak on the events that's to come in the prophecy. But only the prophets can see and do that. All right? So now it says the signs of the end times, which for the most part, this guy is right. I guess his name is Michael Snyder, and he's just trying to plug his book. 
you know, these scholars. And, and, and these scholars get deep because we're deep. You know, like I said, within the last 15, 16 years, since there's been an explosion of Hebrew Israelites waking up, so-called black Spans and Native Americans waking up to the fact that they're Israelites, since that has happened via the Internet, via mainly YouTube, these Christians and these pastors and these evangelists have had to go back in their bag, so to speak, and get deep and get a deeper understanding, a more proper understanding of the scriptures and prophecy. All right. But like I had to do here, I had to kind of correct some things on their understanding and put certain things into proper perspective. But that's because the Lord gives the prophets the true vision. Okay. Or do my best to give a better, proper understanding, you know. But it's all through the Spirit. Okay? So now it says, the signs of the end times are literally being fulfilled all around us. Right? The end of America is upon us. The end of the society is upon us. That's why we have those riots and protests in places like Kenya, all right, France, and even the state of Israel. Okay? Because the Messiah has not returned yet, but he's getting ready to re return. It says, but most of us refuse to see the truth. Well, only the elect are going to see the truth, and that's the elect of the Israelites. All people aren't going to see the truth anyway. Uh, and he says, I do my best to sound the alarm. Well, that's what I'm doing with this video. I'm doing my best to sound the alarm to the elect of Israel, as the Lord has commanded his servants to do. To bring out these um, these uh, facts, man. Okay. So now the Lord is saying that the end of America is 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 here. Okay. And that's including these riots and protests that are happening all around the world. Okay. So once again, this is about the return of Yahweh Shai, Luke 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. That's these eclipses. And upon the earth's distress of nations with perplexity. That are these riots and protests. The sea and the rays roaring. Now there's a different number of different earthquakes and tsunamis and things happening those are also occurring so expect to see more of the sea and the waves roaring okay natural disasters things like that it says men's hearts filling them for fear people are starting to be afraid of the things that are happening in the earth and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the Son of Man. Who's the Son of Man? Not Jesus Christ, but Yahawashai, so-called black man, an Israelite of the tribe of Judah, with dark skin and white woolly hair. He's coming back to deliver his elect and destroy this system. It says, coming in a cloud with power, the power to destroy this system and great glory. Glory for Israel. Glory for the kingdom. Okay? His kingdom to come. And that cloud is not talking about a white fluffy cloud, but it's talking about a so-called UFO or chariot. And that's why the governments of the world are setting up different contingency plans like space forces all right, here in America and NATO and other countries because they want to, they see the, 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 the chariots, so-called UFOs, as a threat, which they are a threat. They're a threat to the rulership of Esau. But nevertheless, this is how Yahweh Shai is coming back. Verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Who's to look up? The elect. All right? And lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Whose redemption? The redemption of Israel. Yasha Allah is coming. So these are great signs, man. These, these, these eclipses that are going to occur. Between this year and early next year, next spring, which I would say would be around Passover. Now we'll see once the apostles put up the calendar, if we'll if we'll have a Passover in March or April. But nevertheless, that's when spring is to come in. 
All right, a little after the spring uh, spring equinox, that's when this eclipse is going to occur, and that and that will be the marking of America with the ah and the tha. Okay. Oh, and I did mention about the ah and the tha because the ah is the beginning of the Hebrew alphabet, and the tha is the um. Is the the tha is the the um, the ending of the Hebrew alphabet. Now there's someone else that is also known as the beginning and the end. And let's see, this is in the book of Revelation. Um, let's see here. Matter of fact, uh, let's go to Revelation, the second chapter. Let's go to the red letter because Yahweh Shai says he is the beginning and the end. Okay. Let's see. He is the beginning of the end and, and the end. Uh, and he says that to the churches. He is the beginning and the end. Man, uh, let, uh, let me let me see if I can get it. And then I'll end on this scripture here. Because these eclipses, these signs in the sun and in the earth and the heavens, these are going to let us know that Yahweh Shai. These are definitely signs letting us know that Yahweh Shai. Okay, that that Yahweh Shai is a uh, is a uh, on his way to return. This is Revelation twenty one and six. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And that is Yahweh Shai. He's given us this truth and this understanding freely. Okay. Let me see here. That should be. I want to get it. Yeah, that should be the red letter. Yep. Let's see. Okay, so it's not putting it in the red letter here. Okay. With the Heavenly Father, he's the beginning and the end. All right? Well, I know Yahweh Shah's words they like to put in the red. Okay. Revelation 22 and 13. All right? Yep, here we go. Yep. Now, these are the words of Yahweh Shah. Revelation 22 and 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Yahweh Shai, see, this is really a quick return for Yahweh Shai. You know, it's been gone for over 2,000 years, back to the right-hand side of the Heavenly Father. That's, it's only been, what, 2,000 years, which 1,000 years is one day to the Lord. So that's, that's two days. So that's quick. All right? It says, and my reward is with me. What is his reward? His reward is of the elect to deliver the elect of Israel, but also the reward of the judgment to the wicked, starting with Esau. It says to give every man according as his work shall be. And we do this work and we teach and we make sure that we uh, give the understanding, the true understanding to the hopeful elect out there. Verse 13 is the point. I am Alpha and Omega, or in the Hebrew, that would be Ah and Tha. And I mentioned earlier that Alpha was Greek because Alpha is a Greek character. And Omega, right? Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Yep, Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. It just says the Messiah is the Alpha to indicate that he is the beginning and the end. All right. Which in the Hebrew, that would be the Alap. Okay. But what does it say? The Alpha is what? Of Hebrew origin. Because it goes back to the Alap. All right? In the Hebrew. Okay? And then it says the Omega. The Omega. Okay? Which is the last letter in the Greek alphabet. Which that would be the Tha. Okay, 
that would be the Tha in the in the Paleo Hebrew alphabet. So he is the last, the end, the first and the last, the the beginning and the end, the beginning and the end. Okay? The first and the last. All right? So this is what we have going on in the near future, okay? Yahweh Shai is about to return. That's a definite, this is a, these are definite signs. These riots, these protests, these eclipses, these are definite signs that Yahweh Shai is on his way, all right? And we could be out of here soon, man. We already have the approval because the last major prophecies to occur is the Karagma, the MOTB, which is a physical device, you know, not sin in any way, shape, and form. As you know, however IUIC teaches it, you know, is a physical device which Elon Musk and his Neuralink project has has been uh, uh, FDA approved for human trials. So that could be happening by the end of this year, but then they could 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 speed it up. They could fast track it like they did the. Uh, the uh, juice, right? You know, what the 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 juicy juice, okay? They can fast track it to where everyone has to get it, because there is going to be a an event that is going to have everyone be caused and forced and mandated to get a uh, uh, a device in their forehead or in their hand, in their hand, okay? And then, of course, World War Three or the War Armageddon. All right, and then Yahweh Shai is going to return in the midst of that, with his reward to deliver the elect, and his reward to destroy the wicked and Babylon the Great, which is America. You know, so with that, hope this was edifying. All praises go to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakhakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom.